Hello YouTube and welcome to the next Root Learning video. On today's video we're going to be revisiting the Weirdale and Teasdale network to cover a journey that I've not yet covered on this add-on. We're going to be driving a BR Class 101 DMU between Bishop Auckland and Weirhead, which is a distance of around 25 and a quarter miles, and I'm using a default scenario which comes with the route for this, which is 101 Bishop Auckland to Weirhead. Along the way on our journey today, we will be calling at Etherley, Whittenley Weir, Harperley, Walsingham, Frosterley, Stanhope, Eastgate, Westgate, St John's Chapel, and finally, Weirhead. The Class 101 diesel multiple unit was constructed between 1956 and 1960 by Metropolitan Camel and was in service up until 2003. The trains were formed of two, three or four coaches per train, with today's train that we're going to be taking formed of three coaches. The total length of each coach is 57 feet, with the powered coaches weighing 32 and a half tonnes and the unpowered coaches weighing 25 tonnes. The maximum speed of each train is 70 miles per hour, though the maximum speed that we'll be able to get up to on this journey today due to the speed limits is 45 miles per hour. There is a total power output of 150 bhp for each engine, and there are two engines in each powered coach. Once in the cab of the Class 101, you'll see just how similar it is to the cab of the Class 111, and indeed the driving techniques which we're going to use today are identical in the Class 101 to those of the Class 111. So I'm not going to go through a fully detailed cab introduction here onto how to drive this type of diesel multiple units. If you'd like more information on what everything does in the cab, then please see my Class 111 video on the Weirdale and Teasdale network from Barnard Castle to Bishop Auckland, which gives a more detailed introduction and I will post the link to that in the description of this video so that it's easy for you to find. But just to quickly say that we now need to put the train into the forward position just with the W key. You probably noticed that the headlights are already switched on because I switched them on already. And now just to quickly go through the controls on the left here we have the power controller which has four steps of power. Just to the right of that is the tachometer, which is the gauge you can see here. This indicates when you need to shift up and down on the gears. And indeed, you'll see me uh, using that uh, quite a lot to judge when to change gears when driving along. Next to that, we have the horn handle, which has a two-tone horn operated with the space bar and B key. Next to that, we have the speedometer measured in miles per hour. Over here, we have the gear handle, which is currently set to gear one. It actually defaults to neutral, so I'd already put it into gear one. Now, this behaves differently depending on whether you have the Armstrong Powerhouse sound pack installed on these DMUs, or whether you're just using them in, the, using them in their default state. So normally, you just simply press shift, well, it's actually E, I think it is, to shift up in gear. So that would normally be gear one and so on. But with this you need to press shift and D and move the handle all of the way to the top and that is the position for gear one. So when you're driving with the Armstrong Powerhouse sound pack installed you must ignore whatever position the HUD says the gear lever is in because the HUD is inaccurate. Just over here to the right we've got the brake gauge. The left hand needle is the one that's important for us today when driving which is currently pointed to zero. Zero indicates that the brakes are fully applied. If I now move the handle to the release position you can see the needle is climbing. And when it's pointing all the way up to 21 that means the brakes are released. This is a vacuum brake and so when you move the handle it doesn't control how hard but how quickly the brakes are applied. And so let's say we wanted to make a, a, a half or 50 percent brake application. You would move the handle to the left using the normal brake key and then once the brake needle has fallen down to 10 on that brake gauge which will be a roughly 50 percent brake application you then have to move the brake handle back to the hold position to hold it at that brake force. So as you can see now I've moved it the needle is cons consistently falling and now I've moved the handle to the right there to hold it in that position. Of course, if you move the handle this way, the further you move it, the quicker the brakes go on. So now that we've had a look at that, we're pretty much ready to depart. Bye. 
Departing from Bishop Auckland, the starting speed limit is 15 miles per hour, and we've got around two and a quarter miles to go to the next stop, which is Etherley. Now that we've reached 15 miles per hour, I've cut the power back down to idle, and now at this point I need to go up to gear 4 to allow the train to coast, as you must always coast in gear 4 in these older DMUs. In a short distance, just after we've crossed the track, to the left hand side on the point you can see coming up, the speed limit will then be going up to 45 miles per hour, which is the maximum speed limit on this entire route. You can see the 45 mile per hour speed board is just coming up now. So what I'm going to do is just as we pass the board I'm going to press shift and E twice to step down to gear 2 ready to accelerate and then I'm going to apply power just as we reach this signal here. So at this point we can now accelerate up towards 45 miles per hour. We'll need to change up to gear 3 at around 25 miles per hour and then finally up to gear 4 at around 40. Once we've shifted up to gear 4 at around 40 miles per hour, what we then need to do is as we accelerate up towards 45 is just cut the power by two notches so that we leave the power handle in notch 2. Notch 2 will actually hold this train at a speed of 44.6 miles per hour, so it's actually really ideal for driving in 45 mile per hour speed limits, and it makes 45 miles per hour extremely easy to maintain, unless we're going up or down steep gradients, at which point we then need to do something different. But for most of the gradients on this route, we can simply just use Notch 2 power in gear 4 at 45 miles per hour to maintain speed. As you can see we're coming up towards 45 miles per hour now, so I'm now going to cut the power back to notch 2 and now you'll just notice that the speedometer needle will stop climbing and we won't accelerate beyond this point. What I'm looking out for along here as the landmark to let us know that the next station is coming up soon is actually the next distance signal that we pass. As we pass that distance signal we've then got half a mile to go to Etherley. One thing that I forgot to do that you really should do with this train is move the brake handle back into the hold position after departing from a station and you should leave it in the hold position when you're not using the brakes. So I've just moved it to that now. I'm going to try and remember to do that uh, after using the brakes later on in this journey. So here's the distance signal indicating that we've got half a mile to go. At that point I then idled the power to allow the train to coast and then at roughly six to seven telegraph poles after that signal, so around this point now, I'm going to apply the brakes down to 10 on the brake gauge and that should slow us down about right. I'm aiming to enter the platform at no faster than around 20 miles per hour as it's not a particularly long platform but we do need to stop at the end of the platform just before the signals that you can see coming up just ahead. So if we stop around here, we should be stopped in about the right place. Departing from Etherley, the starting speed limit is 45 miles per hour. 
and we've got around two and a quarter miles to go to the next stop, which is Wittenley Weir. As we approach the next signal, which you can see just coming up in the distance there, that signal is actually a marker that we've got three quarters of a mile to go to an upcoming speed change where the speed limit drops to 15 miles per hour as we cross a junction to the left. And in fact, we've got quite a sharp curve there. So we can continue to accelerate for now up towards 45 miles per hour. But what I'm going to do is at the point where we will change to gear four, instead of reapplying power once I've made the change up to gear four, I'm just going to allow the train to continue to coast as there's no point in accelerating any further because we'll have to slow down in the not too distant future for the upcoming 15 speed limit. So we're now at around 40 miles per hour and this is the point where I'd normally shift up to gear 4 and then reapply power. So I've just made the shift up to gear 4 now and as you can see just left the power in idle. I need to apply the brakes down to 10 on the brake gauge shortly before the next signals which we encounter which is just after some sidings on the left hand side which you can see just coming up now. So now that we're passing these sidings and you can see the signals coming up, I'm going to apply the brakes down to 10 on the brake gauge there. And we're just slightly below 10, so I'm just going to try and partly release that. Very slight release to bring it up. However, now I've ended up applying the brakes slightly harder than I planned there. So I've just released them back to 10 again. It's finding it slightly difficult to balance the brake handle to get the correct brake pressure. Now we're down to 15 miles per hour. I'm going to allow the train to continue to coast at this point. On the next facing point, which we cross in a moment, the speed limit will then be going up to 25 miles per hour. So at that point, I'm going to step down to gear two and apply power once again. So you can see the facing point is coming up just here now. So at this point, I'm now stepping down to gear two and reapplying power. As we get to 25 miles per hour, which is the current speed limit, I'm once again going to have to step up to gear four for a moment. We're now doing 25. So now I'm going to step up to gear four once again as we need to coast until we're able to accelerate further. The speed limit will be going back up to 45 miles per hour once we cross a point to the right in a moment and start on a single track section. There's then a large overbridge which you can see just coming up in the distance there. As we pass under that large overbridge we're then able to accelerate towards the new 45 speed limit. That being said, as we pass under this overbridge, we've then got around two thirds of a mile to go to our stop at Wittenley Weir. I'm now stepping down to gear three so that I'm able to reapply power once again. At the next signal which comes up, we've then got around a third of a mile to go to our stop and at that point I'm going to idle the power and allow the train to coast and we're going to apply the brakes for our stop at the end of this next left hand curve that you can see coming up. So you can now see the signals marking a third of a mile to the stop and at this point I'm now going to idle the power completely and then as soon as I can I'm going to step up to gear four so I'm going to do that now. And you can see the end of the left hand curve is just coming up so as we reach the end of the curve i'm now making a brake application down to 10 on the brake gauge and that should bring our speed down about right i'm aiming to stop just apply the brake slightly harder again uh, i'm aiming to stop just before a point which we actually have in the platform next to a post on the left hand side which i'll point out in a moment as we get a bit closer to it so i'm just reducing the braking slightly as we're slowing down slightly too quick here
You can now see the post coming up on the left hand side and I'm aiming to stop next to that. Departing Wittenly Weir, the starting speed limit is 45 miles per hour, and we've got just under three and a half miles to go to the next stop, which is Harperley. Shortly after departing the station here, we're starting on a 1 in 98 upward gradient which will affect our ability to accelerate. And due to the fact that you have to manually uh, shift the gears on this train and have to power off at the time, it also means we'll lose just a little bit of speed during the gear change point. So we're now at the point for changing up to gear 3. And what you're going to notice is now that we're in gear 3 as we accelerate towards 40 miles per hour it's going to take a bit longer than it was before just simply due to the steeper uphill gradient. The next landmark along here is a distance signal which is just under half a mile from a 25 mile per hour speed limit and around three quarters of a mile from our next stop. One of the things that I've been doing quite a lot this week is actually watching Matt Peddlesden's uh, live streams on Twitch, on Train Sim Live, and it's helping to re-inspire me to uh, want to do something on Twitch. So I'm hoping to get my Twitch channel properly set up within the next week or two, and then I'm planning on doing a couple of live streams. Um, I'm not sure of the exact dates yet, but certainly I will keep you updated in videos and also on Facebook. Also, if you look up PTG Rail on Twitch and you follow me, then you should get a notification whenever I go online to do a live stream. So with live streams the whole style will be different because it will be more relaxed um, with people in the chat there, people to interact with, I'll be answering people's questions and so it will be just a, a little bit less serious than, than perhaps these route learning or route guide, uh, train guide videos and uh, we'll take a look at driving some trains. I'm going to do my best to drive without the HUD though inevitably broadcasting live mistakes are definitely more likely to be seen and it also depends what the route is because I'm more confident on some routes than others I certainly don't know every route in the game um, and so yeah uh, like London to Brighton would be a great example of one I think I could confidently do in either direction without having to worry but some other routes uh, I think I might need a bit more practice to be able to drive them without the HUD so it may be that if people want me to drive a certain video on a Twitch stream that the HUD has to come up at some points uh, just because I don't know the route but I'm going to try and avoid that where, where possible. I'd also just like to say that this is now the 100th upload to the PTG Rail channel, so this is my 100th video, not my 100th route learning video because of course there are some other videos on here, I think I've probably done around 80 route learning videos so far. But yeah, this is the 100th video on this channel and, and for me that's that's a huge thing because I started this channel not far off nine months ago now and to, to have managed to get up to 100 videos in that time is quite something for me and again I thank you for everyone who's supporting me or uh, supported me through this and I thank you for everyone who subscribed and it's great to see the way that these subscriber numbers are growing we hit 3,000 subscribers uh, two or three weeks ago uh, which was another big thing and also uh, I think it was three or four days ago I had a total of half a million views across all of the videos on this channel um, which again was another big thing for me so I thank you for your support and thank you for taking time to watch and enjoy these videos If you've got any video suggestions of what you might like me to make in the near future, please don't hesitate to let me know. I am interested in suggestions. I can't guarantee being able to make them, but certainly the most popular suggestions are more likely to be made. And I hope that um, there is enough uh, good suggestions to really get a, a few more videos going, which are a bit more subscriber's choice. 
So um, we just passed the distance signal which I mentioned a moment ago. I was just slightly distracted there because of that. Which is why I stuttered slightly in what I was saying. And so just shortly after that signal I've now applied the brakes to bring our speed down to slow us down for the upcoming 25 mile per hour speed limit which comes into force just after this home signal you can see coming up just ahead. So we're now down to just below 25 miles per hour. These speed limits won't be going up again until after we've departed from Harperley Station. And so I'm just going to allow the train to continue to coast along here and I'll apply the brakes just, uh, well, just before we enter the platform. And I'm aiming to stop at the end of the platform here at Harperley. The home signal at the end of the platform is currently on, which means on means it's displaying a, a red aspect. So the arm is currently pointing in a horizontal direction. So at this point I've just made a light brake application just to bring our speed down a little more. And then I'll just adjust the brakes as we get closer to the end so that we stop in the right place. Departing Harperley, the starting speed limit is 25 miles per hour and we've got around 3 miles to go to the next stop, which is Walsingham. Just after we've rejoined the single track section here, the speed limit is going straight back up to 45 miles per hour. So at the point of changing up to gear three, I'm just going to continue to accelerate straight away as the rear of the train should have passed that section now at this point. There are no speed changes between here and Walsingham, so it's just the case of looking out for the landmarks to know when we're getting closer to the stop to know at which point we need to be applying the brakes. So the first landmark that we're look, looking out for is the next distance signal and once we reach the next distance signal we've then got roughly one mile to go to Walsingham and then there's several signals after that that are quite close together so the next set of signals after that are two thirds of a mile from Walsingham and then there's another signal gantry on the right hand side shortly after that which means that we've got around half a mile to go. Of course I'm going to go through all of these as we get closer. And so we've got to look at the signals and some bridges to know the exact breaking point for the station. Now that we're once again back at 45 miles per hour I've cut the power back to notch 2. And that should maintain us at this speed. Another thing I'd like to mention is that I am planning on working on the next train guide very shortly. I'm considering using the class 319 as a train guide. Um, I think that could be quite an interesting video. And beyond that, if you've got the Armstrong Powerhouse sound pack installed, when it comes to the driving techniques section, there's some very interesting things that happen, particularly in bad weather with wheel slip. And so I'd really like to demonstrate that and demonstrate how you would deal with that when driving. So I'm hoping to get that up within the next week or so. 
Also this weekend I am planning on finally getting down to start writing the script for the UK signalling guide, which I'm hoping to get done fairly soon. Um, as I said in the last video, it is a case of it will be ready when it's ready, but I do plan on working on it soon. It's something I'm quite keen to try and get online now. And then after I've done a UK signalling guide due to popular demand, I'm going to be moving on to doing a US signalling guide. So I want to cover the signals in America as well as the UK. As many of you know, I've already done a German signalling guide. So once I've done all three, then I've covered all three of the main countries which we see in Train Simulator. So here's the distance signal that I mentioned. At this point we've got one mile to go to Walsingham Station. What I'm looking out for now is the next set of signals which are at the start of some sidings and these signals indicate that we've got two-thirds of a mile to go. So you can see the next signals here now and you can see the sidings are starting on the right hand side. So we've got two thirds of a mile to go at this point. Next is a three signal gantry on the right hand side. At that point I'm going to idle the power and allow the train to coast. So here's an underbridge just before it to help you remember. And you can see the three gantries on the right there. So I'm idling the power at this point. I'm going to apply the brakes just as we enter this curve after the large arch overbridge which you saw just there. <laughs> I move the brake handle slightly further than I planned initially. I've released the brakes a bit as we brake slightly too early but you can see the platform at Walsingham coming up now. I couldn't see a clear stopping point here at Walsingham Station. I can't see a footbridge where passengers can cross over from one track to the other, nor can I see a foot crossing, and nor can I see an entrance to the station on this side, so I'm not quite sure how people are actually supposed to get into this station, but as a result of not having a clear stopping point, I'm aiming to stop at the end of the platform. Departing from Walsingham, the starting speed limit is 45 miles per hour and we've got around three and a quarter miles to go to the next stop, which is Frostily. Another route that I'm hoping to be able to cover at some point in the not too distant future now is the Chinese route. So is it Chengdu to Swinning or Sunning or I'm not quite sure how it's pronounced. Uh, I think I may need to look up the pronunciations before I make that video as I can imagine struggling with a number of Chinese pronunciations. But a subscriber very kindly gifted it to me completely out the blue last week. And so I'm very thankful for that and I really do appreciate it. And as a result of that, I am hoping to make a video on that route in the not too distant future. I'm also starting to consider how I could potentially make a route guide for a more complicated route. So far with the route guide videos I've covered the Isle of Wight and the West Somerset Railway and both have proved to be very popular. Certainly the last route guide on the West Somerset Railway I've had some really great feedback from that. So I'm really hoping to develop that series so I can ultimately cover every route in game. Some routes are obviously going to be easier to cover than others and the most complicated route of all that I'm hoping to ultimately cover 
is London to Brighton, which I'm hoping will be sort of the crowning achievement of this channel, the uh, best video that I've put together, but I've really got to put a lot of planning into that. However, I'm hoping to get that up still this summer before I start university, as I believe it probably will be one of the longest to make videos that I've ever done. And of course I start university on the 14th of September, so I'm hoping to get that done really by the end of August, if possible. And I'm hoping that the new class 455 comes out before then. As I'm really hoping to be able to use all of the correct trains for a, any AI that you may see moving while I'm recording that video. I'm also now waiting on the new class 455 add-on before I make any new videos on the London to Brighton route as I am planning on making a couple more route learning videos on that in the not too distant future including a run from London Victoria to Brighton via the slow lines so we'll take a slower stopping service down to Brighton from London at this point just here where you can see these signals with the crossing just after we've got around one and a half miles to go to Frosterley station. At the next right hand curve coming up I'm then going to idle the power as at that point we've got just under half a mile to go to an upcoming change in the speed limit down to 25 miles per hour. So I'm now idling the power as we enter this right hand curve and I'm going to brake to 10 on the brake gauge just before the next signal which you can see coming up just ahead now. So I'm going to apply the brakes just at the end of this curve here, now down to 10. And this should bring our speed down to 25 miles per hour quite nicely. That was slowing down just slightly too early by the looks of it. So I'm going to release the brakes completely now as we're now doing 25 and allow the train to coast. In fact, we're just going to cross a point in a moment to the right hand side and the point's coming up just after this signal here. And so now you can see where the speed limit is dropping to 25. It's going straight up to 45 after this point just here. So I'm now going to step down to gear 3 and apply power to bring our speed up. At this speed we could have probably stepped down to gear 2, however I didn't want to step down to gear 2 to have to step straight back up to gear 3 again after accelerating just a few miles per hour. going to idle the power in a moment as we get to just above 30 miles per hour as our stop is coming up very shortly. So at this point I'm now idling the power and then I'm going to step up to gear 4 as we are coasting along and then I'm going to apply the brakes as we approach this next signal just coming up. In fact you can see the platform coming up just ahead now so I've got the brakes on for that. slowing down quite nicely in fact possibly slightly too early there and we need to stop fairly close to the end here at Frostily I'm going to stop just, well, just past where this fence goes in that you can see just on the right hand side there, close to the platform sign. Departing from Frosterly, the starting speed limit is 45 miles per hour and we've got just over two miles to go to the next stop, which is Stanhope.
the next landmark along here will be the next signal and at this signal we've then got around a third of a mile to go to an upcoming 25 mile per hour speed limit at that point I'm then going to idle the power and then there will be a warning for the upcoming 25 speed limit just after that and at that warning I'm then going to apply the brakes the 10 on the brake gauge and that should slow us down about right in time for the 25 limit So we're now passing the next distance signal and I believe it's the next signal where we need to think about idling the power and braking. I could be wrong actually, it could have been the distance signal. I'm not too worried however because as I mentioned there is a warning for the 25 limit so I will see the warning board in time to know that that's the time to brake. I'm now back down to notch 2 of power in gear 4 and that should maintain us at this speed. Looks like you can see the next signal coming up now and we haven't seen any 25 speed limit warnings yet. So I'm just going to idle the power now as we pass this signal and look out. Looks like I can see the 25 warning coming up now. So at this point I'm now going to apply the brakes. So we're now down to 25 miles per hour in time for crossing this point to the left hand side. And now need to keep an eye on our speed and ensure that we don't lose too much, in fact it looks like we are doing so. I'm just going to step down to gear 2 at this point and give us some power for a moment to bring us back up towards 25 miles per hour and then idle the power once again. Our stop is coming up in a moment at Stanhope. And so now we've got back up to 25, I'm going back to gear 4. Which I'm not sure what gear I'm in. 1, 2, 3, 4, that's better. I wasn't sure what position uh, the handle needed to be in for gear 4, but we are back into gear 4 now. And you can see Stanhope platforms coming up just ahead. I'm going to apply the brakes just as we enter the platform and I'm aiming to stop around the area of the footbridge. Departing Stanhope, the starting speed limit is 25 miles per hour and we've got around two and three quarter miles to go to the next stop, which is Eastgate. Just after we rejoined the single track section, which we're just about to in a moment, as you can see here, the speed limit is then going back up to 45 miles per hour once again. So at this point, we're ready to change gear up to gear three. And by the time I've actually made the change, which I'm going to now, and applied power once again, 
we're already clear and the speed limit is 45 once again. There are no speed changes between here and Eastgate. So what we're looking out for along here is a landmark which will be a distance signal. I believe it's the next distance signal that we will pass. And at that point we've then got half a mile to go to Eastgate Station. So we're now at the point for changing up to gear four. And as previously, once we reach gear four, uh, not gear four, sorry, once we reach 45 in gear four, I meant to say, then I will go back to not to a power to maintain the speed. So I'm just going to step back to notch 2 power now, just to ensure that we don't break the speed limit at any point. And so just driving along here now, I'm just looking out for the next distance signal. And then after that I know that I need to start preparing to stop, and I'm pretty sure that it's not that far away now. As you can see, we are comfortably maintaining 45 miles per hour. I believe that may be the distance signal coming up just ahead, which I can see now. Now as we get closer, indeed it is. So that means we've got around half a mile to go to our stop and I'm going to idle the power at this point and I'm going to apply the brakes down to 10 on the brake gauge at the end of this right hand curve that we're currently on. So now reaching the end of the curve and I'm applying the brakes. the brakes slightly harder than I was planning. Um, I'd accidentally left the brakes into the slight apply position so the brake pressure was still falling there. We're coming in about right 15 miles per hour seems like a good speed for this station. I'm aiming to stop just before the point here in the platform. Departing from Eastgate, the starting speed limit is 45 miles per hour, and we've got around 3 miles to go to the next stop, which is Westgate. Not quite sure why they're called Eastgate and Westgate, I mean I'm not sure if there was some giant gate somewhere and one's to the east and one's to the west of it. 
Um, either that or somebody was having a bad creative day when coming up with uh, place names in this area. So just after departing from Eastgate, we're starting on a 1 in 102 uphill gradient, which will vary a bit. But we're going to be going pretty much constantly uphill all of the way from here to Weirhead. This will of, course, will of course affect our ability to accelerate. It will also cause us to lose more speed at the point of gear changes, which we have done just there. We probably lost about three or four miles per hour while I changed up to gear three. And indeed it also means that the power settings are going to have to be slightly different to try and maintain the speed. The next signal that we pass indicates that we've then got one and three quarter miles to go to Westgate. So we're now getting up to the point where we change up to gear 4 and this is where we're really going to notice problems with acceleration. It will certainly take quite a while to get up to 45 miles per hour. And as you can see we've actually lost some speed at this point and I am now in gear 4 in full power once again. But the tachometer certainly isn't climbing much, only very slightly. And so it's going to be very slow going, getting above 40 towards 45 miles per hour. And then due to the uphill gradient I need to use notch 3 power at roughly 45 to try and maintain the speed. So we're now passing a loop, the signals at the start of the loop indicated one and three quarter miles to go. As we reach the end of the loop, coming up in a moment, we've then got one and a quarter miles to go to Westgate Station. So here's the end of the loop now, indicating one and a quarter miles left to go. As you can see, we're still struggling to get up to 45 miles per hour. What I'm looking out for now is the next distance signal, at which point we've then got just half a mile to go to Westgate. As we're now getting towards 45, I'm just cutting the power back by 1 to notch 3. I'm just going to keep an eye on our speed to try and ensure that we don't lose too much. Here's the distance signal which I mentioned, indicating that we've got half a mile to go. What I'm going to do now is idle the power and apply the brakes as we see some home signals, which will be coming up just ahead in a moment. I believe I can now see the home signals coming up. So at this point, I've now idled the power and I'm going to apply an initial gentle brake application due to the uphill gradient, now increasing to 10, which is a good half brake application. As you can see, our speed is coming off fairly quickly due to the up gradient. Here at Westgate Station, I'm aiming to stop at the end of the platform. And I've just temporarily reduced the braking as we were slowing down just a bit too quick.
Departing from Westgate, the starting speed limit is 45 miles per hour. We're starting immediately on a 1 in 105 uphill gradient. So as you may have noticed, I actually applied power there before I'd released the brakes, just to make sure that the train didn't roll back at any point. At this point, we've got around one and a half miles to go to the next stop, which is St. John's Chapel. So along here there's going to be a few changes in the uphill gradient, though not major changes. Initially it's going to steepen to up at 1 in 86, before finally shallowing to up at 1 in 115. And then after the next distance signal, which marks half a mile to go to St John's Chapel Station, at that point the gradient will then be steepening to closer to 1 in 100 once again. So we're now reaching the next distance signal, indicating we've got half a mile to go to St John's Chapel. And at this point is where we'd normally change up to gear 4, so what I'm going to do in a moment, that's what I'm going to do now, is idle the power. As you can see we're losing some speed already, I've now changed up to gear 4. I'm just reapplying power for a moment, and I'm going to apply the brakes just before the next signal coming up. So I'm now going to idle the power completely. And we've now got the brakes on at 10, which should be about As you can see, this is not a particularly long platform and we do need to stop at the end. Departing from St John's Chapel, the starting speed limit is 45 miles per hour and we are starting on an up 1 in 97 gradient. So again, as you may have noticed, I get, did give us two notches of power before releasing the brakes. At this point, we've got two miles to go to our next and final stop, which is Weirhead. Along here now, the gradient is going to be getting steeper. Indeed, it's going to be steepening to up 1 in 76, which will severely impede our ability to accelerate. Indeed, we're actually not going to get to a great speed along here at all as we head towards Weirhead Station. The next landmark along here is a distance signal. At the next distance signal, we've then got around a third of a mile to go from a uh, speed reduction down to 15 miles per hour. 
indeed we're going to actually apply the brakes for that at a warning board which we will see which I don't believe in this time period in real life we had warning boards for upcoming speed restrictions the Morpeth board as we know it today which is a tri upside down triangular board with a yellow border which gives us warnings of upcoming speed limits came in after a series of derailments at Morpeth and as a result it was seen that, that we did need an advanced warning for our speed limit reductions but I believe that they only appeared in the modern format and I'm not sure that speed limit warnings actually existed in the 1950s and 60s. I'll need to do my research on that and I will mention that in the UK signalling guide because that will also cover trackside signs as well. As you can see we're finding it very difficult to get up towards 40 miles per hour where we need to change the gear and indeed if we change up to gear 4 we will then start losing speed along here. Uh, this, this gradient is just too steep to travel in at gear 4. So here's the next distance signal which I mentioned and at this point I'm just going to idle the power and allow the train to coast. We now have the warning for the upcoming 15 speed limit which we're just about to pass and the limit actually drops to 15 at the next home signals. So at this point we're now using 10 on the brake gauge and at this point I'm shifting up to gear 4 as well because we're going to, well we are technically coasting for a moment. We're slowing down a bit too quick due to the uphill gradient, so I did brake slightly harder than was perhaps necessary. So I'm just going to allow the train to continue to coast for a moment. Once we've passed the 15 board, I'm then going to need to shift down in gears to give us a little bit of power to try and maintain that speed or we're going to end up losing too much. So we're now down to 15. I'm shifting down to gear two and giving us initially one notch of power. Now I'm gonna go up to a second one just keep an eye on what happens to our speed on the speedometer. The gradient will level just before we get to the platform here at Weirhead and you can see the platform just coming up there just around this curve. Looks like notch 2 is roughly holding us at 15 for the moment. I'm going to cut the power back now as we're about to enter the platform. Again I'm aiming to stop at the end of the platform I'm also shifting up now to gear 4, just to allow the train to coast. So I'm not going to stop quite at the end of the platform, I'm aiming to stop closer to this ground frame just here, which seems to me like it would probably be about the right place. So here we are, arrival at Weirhead. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really do hope that you've enjoyed this video. Please don't forget that you can find me on Facebook for the latest updates. The link to my Facebook page is in the description of this video. And if you value the work that I do and would like to sponsor me towards the cost of new DLC and new equipment so I can make a wider range of higher quality videos, then please visit my Patreon page for further information. Again, the link for that is in the description of this video. Thanks for watching.